জননং সারদাং দেবিং রামকৃষ্ণং জগদ্গুরুং পাদপদমে তয় শ্রীত্বা প্রণমামি মুহুর্মুহ At the very outset, I offer my devoted pranams at the lotus feet of Sri Ramakrishna, Holy Mother Sarada Devi, and Swamiji Maharaj. Then I offer my pranams to our revered Sangha Guru, Swami Smarananandaji Maharaj, the President of Ramakrishna Order, who is not here amongst us today in this function because of his indifferent health. My Bhakti Purna Pranams to very revered Srimas Swami Bhajananda Ji Maharaj, revered Vice President of our Holy Order. My loving namaskars to Swami Balabhadra Anandaji, Swami Tattvavida Anandaji, and also to Swami Nirvi Kalpanandaji, respected elders, brothers, Swamis, coming from different Bhaprachar Purishad, respected nuns, very, very respected sisters and brothers coming from length and breadth of this great country. Very cordial and warm welcome to all of you. Welcome to other guests and dignitaries too. Your announcer has told that I am supposed to deliver the keynote address, but as a matter of fact, Balabhadranandha ji yesterday already has delivered the keynote address. And then today, Swami Bhajananda Ji Maharaj will speak and I am absolutely sure he will present us with a very learned keynote address in his presidential address today. Naturally, I will love to roam here and there, present you some sporadic ideas which I gathered in course of my long stint, long association with Bhaprachar Purishat, that too, one of the remotest corner of our country, maybe the remotest corner, the remotest corner of the country, erstwhile Nepha and presently Arunachal Pradesh. I would like to share some of my experience as far as this is concerned, Bhaprachar Purishad is concerned with you. After founding Ramakrishna Mission, Samiji said, I quote, this association will bear the name of him in whose name we have become sannasins, taking whom as your ideal, you are leading the life of the householders in the field of activity and whose holy name and the influence and whose unique life and teachings have within 12 years of his passing away spread in such an unthought of way both in the East and also in the West. We are only the servants of the Master. I quote, the proposal being enthusiastically supported by all the householder disciples, the future method of work was discussed and some resolutions were passed, embodying in them 
the main principles and the aims and objects by which the movement is now guided according to the history of Ramakrishna mission by Swami Gumbirananda Ji. 125th year, 125th anniversary of Ramakrishna mission is now a blinking phenomenon in the history of India. A new narrative of service to the humanity has been engraved by this holy Sangha on the rock of human civilization for the posterior generations, which will go on ruminating and reflecting upon the unimaginable sacrifice of the scores of spiritual aspirants who assembled under the holy feet of New Age Incarnation, Sri Ramakrishna. While upholding the great ideal of renunciation and asceticism in the spiritual voyage of an individual and the society as well, Sri Ramakrishna gave appropriate importance of leading an ideal life in the Garhastu Ashrama. According to our Indian tradition too, this ashrama doesn't only sustain the Sannasho ashrama, but help in spreading the spiritual message of the Lord, the incarnation. In Ramakrishna incarnation, we have seen how Master Masai, more popularly known as AIM, the recorder of gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. Ramchandra Dattu, Girish Ghosh, and many others shouldered intense and unforgettable responsibility in the dissemination of his message. In fact, if we survey the immense progression of the Holy Order, we will find out that a large number of branch centers of Ramakrishna Mission and Ramakrishna Mat were started by the dedicated devotees of Thakur, Ma and Swamiji, who, despite living a household life, have built up those ashramas with an enormous toil and struggles has off to them. Swami Vivekananda, while consecrating the Belur Mott premises on 9th December 1898, made a prophetic statement, I quote him, from the center of universal tolerance will go forth the shining message of goodwill and peace and harmony to deluge the whole world." Unquote. True to Swamiji's prophetic statement, Ramakrishna Mat and Ramakrishna Mission continue to serve as the principal channel for the spread of the message of Holy Trio throughout the world. Although the preeminence of these two institutions as the main channel for the proliferation of the message and power of the Holy Trio is an undisputed fact, it is obvious that these institutions cannot remain the whole only channel. These are the principal channels. The message of Sri Ramakrishna, Holy Mother, and Swamiji is so universal and so eagerly sought that it cannot be confined to only one channel. It needs multifarious channels. Hence, as we have mentioned before, to fulfill this diversity of needs, hundreds of small and big ashramas, study circles, etc., have sprung up all over India, which function independently of the administrative control of Ramakrishna Mat and Ramakrishna Mission. Started by lay devotees, these non-affiliated centers continue to be inspired by the motto of our order, Atmana Mokshatang Jagat Hitayacha. For the success of a movement, three things are necessary, neta, niti, and nai. Our neta is undisputedly 
Swami Vivekananda, the general of the army, general of the militia to which we are humble soldiers, all of us. And then Niti. Niti is Shiva Gane Jiva Shiva. And the motto, the nai, the nai is Atmana Moksha Jagad Dhitayacha. That is for one's own salvation and for the welfare of the world. It is thus only natural that the centers also undertake various service activities on the same line as Ramakrishna Mat and Ramakrishna Mission. Thus we see that this Ramakrishna movement is the indispensable outcome of a divine providence of God. The history of the Ramakrishna movement is full of outstanding examples of selfless and steadfast householder devotees. From the earliest days of movement, the sustained patronage and financial support of the householder devotees helped the monastic brotherhood to pull on in spite of tremendous hardships. But even more than this, where their exemplary lives, as well as those of some women devotees, which served as living demonstration of the ideal the movement stands for, and which helped to spread its message of hope and joy all over. In his address before the second convention of the Mat and Mission held in 1980, first being held in 1926, the second was held in 1980, and well, in his address, very revered, Srimad Swami Bireshwar Anandaji Maharaj, the 10th President of Ramakrishna Order, gave a rousing call in the same strain. He said, I quote, I appeal to all the followers of Sri Ramakrishna to take to the rebuilding of the nation vigorously both individually and by organizing more institutions like this in various parts of the country for the work done by the monastics to much in itself is yet very little indeed compared to the needs of the country. Unquote. This is what Swami Bireshwaranandu ji said. His interpretation that a person sincerely following the teachings of Holy Trio is a member of the Sangha has broadened the scope of the movement and provided impetus to like-minded people to take active interest and part in it. In the second convention of Bhava Prachar Parishas held in 1998, Rivihar Srimad Swami Bhuteshanandaji Maharaj, the 12th President of Ramakrishna Order, reminded the delegates in his benedictory address that, I quote again, organized functioning is absolutely necessary to carry on the work effectively with loyalty to the ideals of Sri Ramakrishna. Rivihar Maharaj further opined that, I quote, Swamiji knew what the problems of the society we are at that time. These problems are still there today, more or less. Many more may crop up in future, but we have to tackle them in the spirit and practical methods shown by Samiji Maharaj. All problems can be solved in the light of the life and teachings of Ramakrishna Vivekananda. Swami Vivekananda wanted us to work with the faith that we are mere instruments in the hands of Sri Ramakrishna and also with the purpose of serving a world organization. Unquote. Now the idea of bringing the non-affiliated centers closer to Ramakrishna Mat and Ramakrishna Mission gave rise to the formation of Bhaprachar Purishas under the overall guidance of Ramakrishna Math and Ramakrishna Mission, 
to coordinate the work of non-affiliated centers. It was effected by most revered Swami Bideshwaranandaji Maharaj during the second general convention of the Ramakrishna Math and Ramakrishna Mission in 1980. Ever since its formation in 1983, formation of Bhava Prachar Purishad, Bhava Prachar Purishad ashramas have been playing key role in reaching out the marginal classes. As we have already mentioned that Thakur Ma and Samiji have always accepted the due and proper standing of the Gadhastha Ashrama in the spiritual world. This is the ashrama which, if properly nurtured and maintained, will nourish the human resource of monastic order. In our scriptures, this ashrama has been hailed because of its contribution in maintaining the life of the ascetics. Indeed, Bhaprachar Purishad ashramas may well provide the ideological motive force towards sustaining the Gadhastha ashrama of our age-old Indian tradition. In the area of service activities, particularly during relief activities, the active participation of Bhavaprachar ashramas has been praiseworthy. A special mention may be made about their spontaneous participation during the COVID-19 relay program. Another area in which the Bhavaprachar ashramas are doing a stellar job is that of spreading the message of the Holy Trio. Indeed, many learned people associated with Bhavaprachar ashramas are making meaningful contributions to the Ramakrishna Vivekananda literature by way of doing new researches and translations. Last but not the least, a number of Bhavaprachar ashramas being meticulously run along the lines of the Ramakrishna Mission ashrama have gone on to become affiliated with the Ramakrishna Mott and Ramakrishna Mission, Ramakrishna Mission ashramas to name a few, Ramakrishna Mission ashramas at Bolpur, at Rurkela, those at Chengam, Kolapur, Raiganj, Krishnanagar, Puducheri, Purnia, Tirupati, Kharupetia, Ahmedabad, and many others, amongst many others. These are few instances amongst, as I have told just now, many. This is indeed a happy trend. With these achievements notwithstanding, there are certain, there are certain areas that can surely be attended to by the Bhava Prachar ashramas. Spirituality being the core message of the Ramakrishna movement, a true propagation of this message can only be effected through persons with great character and competence. Therefore, the Bhavaprachar ashramas must ensure that their numbers are of impeccable character, their members are of impeccable character and integrity. Anyone coming in contact with such individuals will feel certainly elevated. The complexity of our modern society has necessitated the rendering of many times of help, many types of help to the humanity. Compared to the need of food and shelter that dominated the last few decades, the present decade is, perhaps the subsequent decades also will remain to be mostly dominated by the demand of the release from the captivity of psychological diseases. Bearing this in mind, it has almost become mandatory that our service activities be accordingly tailored to these needs. So in response to such needs, appropriate programs such as guided meditation sessions, discussion of higher values, stress relief sessions through meditative awareness, etc., 
must be progressively taken up by the Bhavaprachar ashramas. Finally, let me point out that there continues to be a close rapport between the householder devotees and monks, and the Bhavaprachar centers have played an important role in making available the message of Sri Ramakrishna. Swami Vivekananda never wanted to flood the country with monks. It can never be. On the contrary, he wanted that there should be a healthy balance between lay devotees and monks. Sri Ramakrishna encouraged his householder devotees to discharge the duties of life in a detached way by practicing self-surrender to God. And he assured that the householders too can attain mukti by the grace of God. Indeed, in this present age, of ours, which is so characterized by radical changes in individual and social life. It is supremely important for the lay devotees and the members of the Bhava Prachar Parishad Ashramas to continue to steadfastly uphold the great values that the Ramakrishna movement stands for. Although we extend our hearty congratulations to the Bhava Prachar Purishat for their spirited service in the field of dissemination of ideas of Ramakrishna Vivekananda. Yet, I feel that there is still scope as far as their involvement in the field of service activities is concerned. We shall be glad to see the ashramas coming under the Bhava Prachar Purishat playing larger role as far as direct service activities are concerned. Although there are various ways of serving the divine, yet as the latest incarnation Ramakrishna himself has stressed, the service of the weak, service of the poor, as his greatest service, in a memorable letter written to his brother disciples from America in 1894, Swamiji Maharaj says, I quote, Great Lord, He is at our back. I cannot write anymore. Onward, I only tell you this, that whoever reads this letter will imbibe my spirit. Have faith, onward, Great Lord. I feel as if somebody is moving my hand to write in this way. Onward, Great Lord. Everyone will be swept away. Take care. He is coming. Whoever will be ready to serve him. No, not him, but his children. The poor and the downtrodden. The sinful and the afflicted. Down to the very world. Who will be ready to serve this? In them he will manifest himself. Through their tongues the goddess of learning herself will speak and the Divine Mother, the embodiment of all power, will enthrone herself in their hearts. I would like to point out four trust areas which may be considered by the Bhava Prachar Parishas for immediate concern. I hope I am permitted to do so. Number one, drinking water. A major portion of our country is facing a huge crisis in the form of scarcity of potable water. Needless to mention there is a high probability of this problem escalating in the coming years all over the country. Each and every year in the relief section, we receive proposals to start drought relief work for an extensive area, especially in the states of Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, and Karnataka. Although we are conducting drought relief work in many such areas for the last few years, yet it is not possible for us to reach each and every corner. Moreover, over and above the regular distribution of drinking water, some permanent solution must also be thought out. I will be very glad if some of the centers coming under the Bhava Prachar Purishas, take up this task. We may extend all possible guidance and help to them 
in this record. I again repeat, I repeat, we may extend all possible guidance and help to them in this regard, provided that they come forward to do this. Two, our Prime Minister has of late given a slogan, Pahle Sochalai, Feed the Balai. Our villages and even urban areas need public toilets. Can Babu Prachar Purishad apply their mindsets to this problem and arrange construction of low-cost toilets in the nearest villages? Three, they can do it even with the help of the administration. There is a lot of funds from the government of India flowing to different state governments for this purpose. <clears throat> can Babu Prachar Purishad supply their mindsets to this problem and arrange construction of low-cost toilets in their nearest villages? Three, disaster management. Although distribution of drinking water during periods of water scarcity may be a field of special concern, the centers coming under the Bhaprachat Purishas may try playing a more important role during the relief activities conducted at the time of natural calamities. But it will be very heartening to see these centers conducting relief services on their own. <clears throat> Incidents like accidental fire, flash floods, Storms and cyclonic devastations occur each and every year in some or other parts of the country. And in spite of our best efforts, it becomes impossible for us to reach out to every corner. However, we may easily accomplish this task through the network of the Bhaprachar Parishwa spread over the country. Of course, in such cases, the plan of action must be chalked out properly in advance. Four, youth. A major section of the people involved in the working of the centers coming under the Bhaprachar Purishas comes under the advanced stage. Bracket, uh, maybe say 50 to 75 years. Now Bhaprachar Purishad itself is 40 year old and the people who were young and joined the Bhaprachar Parishad steered it ahead. Now they are old of 70 or 75 summers. And it's not possible for them to steer and give leadership as they have been doing all these years and they have neither allowed any young to come and take over the reins from them. So there is a leadership crunch in almost all these states the old people are not ready psychologically, maybe, to hand over the, the, the went to the successive generation, to the younger generation. That has to be looked into very seriously. Although the sincerity and commitment of these tireless workers is a source of inspiration to many, yet it is high time that we start inducting more and more young faces in the system. We must remember that 70% of our population is below 40 years of age. 70% of our population in the country is below 40 years of age, the largest youth population for any country in the world. And uh, it is the right balance of experience and youthful vibrancy that is the secret of lasting success. We all know how all the hopes of Swamiji towards the rejuvenation of our motherland rested on the youth. Not only must the elders provide encouragement and make way to the next generation, but also my appeal goes to the young members to mold themselves sufficiently in such a way that they may be considered worthy of shouldering the responsibility. I pray to Holy Trio that their benign blessings may shower upon all of us so that we may become able to play our assigned part in the holy lila of Ramakrishna Bhattara and surrender us at his holy feet. We must address the following to remove the not so serious attitude of a few persons, their ap apathy 
and indifference to the movement. And why? Because, number one, the lack of knowledge regarding the pride of place that Bhaprachar Parishad occupies in our scheme of things. That's why many people has a very casual and lukewarm response to Bhaprachar movement, which must be corrected, corrected here and now. Two, the fear that this Bhaprachar Parishad movement may get diluted with the mainstream movement called Ramakrishna Mat and Ramakrishna Mission. And naturally, they have uh, spent their lifetime earning in many cases. They have given their toil, they have given their energy, they have given their youth and constructed a beautiful ashram. And they do not want that this ashram is totally diluted with the mainstream of Ramakrishna movement called Ramakrishna Mission and Ramakrishna Mat. That may be one fear which must be allayed, both from the headquarters and as well as from the members, uh, by the members of Bhaprachar Purishad Ashramas. And then, well, uh, a word of caution. Hope you don't mind it or take it amiss. Um, presidents and vice presidents are mostly the monastic heads of our centers and other monks are not so much involved in it is also a syndrome that we see very recently which we must come over. Now one or two words of caution as I have already told you about the functioning of member ashramas. Number one, most of the Parishad ashrama call themselves mission which creates confusion. A couple of years back, one private center in Kolkata in Salt Lake they went to the government of India. And when government of India asked them that are you from Ramakrishna Mission or Ramakrishna Math? They told you we are from Ramakrishna Mission and Ramakrishna Math. So what is the proof? One of our vice presidents, he sent a blessing to them. Maybe for their souvenir, maybe for some other purpose. They placed that blessing to the ministry officials and claim that we belong to Ramakrishna Mat. The president, vice president of Ramakrishna Mat and Ramakrishna Mission has given this uh, well wishes and they treated it as a credential. Then they suspected, they got in touch with us and then, uh, well, we told that no, they do not belong to Ramakrishna Mat and Ramakrishna Mission. The authorities of that center came to us to plead that please help us by, by endorsing our statement so that we get the money uh, that we have applied for. We didn't do it. And I think they are not very happy with the mainstream Ramakrishna movement today. They are completely uh, secluded. So <laughs> this is a very dangerous trend. Most of the Purishad Ashrama call themselves mission. Even the public do it, which creates confusion. Sometimes mission has to temporarily earn bad name for the undoing of Bhaprachar ashramas. Of late, we were about to be entangled in lawsuits in a couple of cases, not one case. In a couple of cases, the headquarters of Ramakrishna Mat and Ramakrishna Mission got entangled with lawsuits that occurred because of the irregularity committed by the management of that particular Bhava Prachar Purishad Ashrama. We had to appear in the court and convince the court that we are advisors to this organization. We are not executives of this organization and hence our name may be espoused. And they did it. But this is a very dangerous trend. Now coming to Northeast, uh, in the very beginning I told that I spent a lot of uh, time almost two decades, couple of decades in the northeast and that too, furthermost uh, corner of the northeast, very near China, McMahon line. So, uh, what I saw there as far as this chapter of Ramakrishna Vivekananda movement is concerned. In the northeast, I have observed that minority linguistic communities are perpetually suffering from a sense of identity crisis. They discover for themselves 
a new sense of identity throughout Parishad Ashramas. As a result, everyone, even those who do not subscribe to the basic tenets of Sri Ramakrishna, do not accept him as an incarnation of God, have scanty respect for the ideal of Ramakrishna movement, take shelter in the Ramakrishna ashramas that sometimes creates rift amongst the devotees, creating confusion amongst the public. Uh, that happens in the Northeast. And that's why the involvement of these people without conviction in the lofty ideals of Ramakrishna Vivekananda creates a lot of confusion and sends very often wrong signals in the society, which harms the uh, mainstream Ramakrishna Vivekananda movement also. Three, for some temporary benefits, sometimes people with dubious credentials and even the politicians are involved in the activities of Bhava Prachar Purishad. Some of the Bhava Prachar Purishad, they, they make an effort. Nowadays it is decreasing, but earlier it was rampant. For some benefit, for some short-term benefit, they used to hobnob with the politicians. They used to even um, venture to make ventures to uh, 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 appoint the local MLA or the ministers or the president or vice president of the ashrama. So that is something which will eat into the vitals of our movement. For some temporary benefits, sometimes people with dubious credentials and even the politicians are involved in the activities of Bhava Prachar Purishad, and this practice ultimately eats into the vitals of the ashrama. Very important note of caution. Dear devotees, keeping all these ideas given by our illustrious predecessors, that this convention is held today and yesterday, where we are sure that the purpose of recapit recapitulation of our ideal, exchange of views, discussions on common issues, resolution of doubts, and formulation of future course of action for strengthening the private astronomers as well as the Purishas, making in tune with the movement in a more vibrant, powerful, and effective way would be ascertained. Once again, I extend a hearty welcome to all of you who have come from far and wide, from different nook and corner of this great and noble country. And uh, we, we are grateful to you. And we are very grateful, I personally very grateful that uh, you have, uh, you have uh, shown tremendous patience in bearing with me for such a long time this morning. Thank you so much.